Hi folks, I'm going to demonstrate some of the touch control functionality that InControl provides. Here's a very basic InControl example you've probably seen before. I'll just run it for a moment. And uh, it's already set up and we can use the controller to move the cube uh, and push buttons to change the color of the cube based on the button. Very simple and you've probably seen that before. Uh, and now I'm going to take this example and extend it. Uh, here we have the InControl manager object uh, in the scene and we're going to add a touch manager to it. We'll go to the create uh, menu on the hierarchy, in control, touch, manager, and you'll see a couple of things have happened. First of all, uh, the touch manager component has been added. Also, uh, we'll see here if we expand the in control game object, uh, we'll see that there's a touch camera also uh, attached to the scene. It is put on the UI layer and set up in an orthographic way so that we can show the uh, touch control UI through this camera uh, alone. Okay, so here we have the, um, the touch manager and there's a few options here. You can see there's a uh, control show gizmos which uh, will make more sense in a minute. Um, and uh, then we can also see here there's a controls enabled flag which we can toggle to turn off the controls if we need to do so. And I'll give some more detailed information on that later. There's also a few shortcut buttons here just for adding controls. So uh, let's just add a button control very quickly. And uh, we'll see when I click the button, we've added a touch button control. Uh, it's automatically selected for you. Um, and uh, it needs a little bit more setup. Uh, but you'll see here that there's a, a gizmo displayed. And, and that's because this application is not running yet. So um, the sprites aren't being loaded in or anything like that. In fact, there aren't any sprites attached to it yet. Uh, so these gizmos uh, can give you an indication of what's going to happen uh, when we run the application. But let's finish setting this up here. You'll notice here that uh, there's quite a few options. Uh, you can anchor it to the different uh, sides of the screen. Um, and uh, then there's a unit type. And by default, everything works um, in percentage points. So that if we were to resize the uh, screen, you'll see the control resizes accordingly. Um, but we can also change that to pixels if you prefer to have a pixel perfect um, uh, sprite uh, for some reason. Uh, then we can also determine uh, where the input will be set and by default it's set to action one, the action one button. Um, there's a couple of options here I'll demonstrate in a minute as well once we get it going. And then we have um, the button sprite and um, we can set up a, a few various things. Let's just uh, set this one up. Um, with uh, this A button um, sprite I that, that I already have uh, in the example project. <clears throat> you can see there's an idle sprite and a busy sprite that really corresponds to whether the button is up or down. Um, and then there's also a uh, idle color and busy color so that we can, uh, by default, it's faded out 50% alpha. Um, we also have the shape option which we can uh, use to determine uh, that's really the hitbox of where the touches will interact and um, uh, we can use set that to rectangle if you prefer uh, if your sprite is that shape by default we'll just keep it an oval here and again the sprite can also be um, sized by percent or pixel uh, and we'll just leave it as is for the moment and just uh, run this application and see what happens And you'll see here, we have um, the sprite here. And when I click on it, you'll notice that the cube turns green, which is what's supposed to happen. The events from this touch control uh, is being fed to in control as a virtual device and behaves, uh, as far as in control is concerned, just like uh, a normal controller, even though there's only one control on it at the moment. Okay, uh, let's just um, look at, uh, let's add a second button so we can see what some of these other options do. Um, I will go to create in control touch button control and there's now a second button control and I'll just uh, let's see add the uh, B sprite to this control and I'm going to move it up just a little bit and I'll take the other one and move it to the left a little bit okay so now we have two buttons so now let me run this and I'll show you what happens Okay, you'll see there's now two buttons, each of which can be clicked, and the uh, cube turns the right color. So there's two controls now uh, in this virtual device, and um, uh, you can have as many as you like. And uh, let's do talk about some of these options now. Uh, so you'll notice up here, um, 
and select the uh, A button, that there is an option that is ticked by default, allow slide toggle. What this is, and you saw me do that a moment ago, is it allows me to uh, click down or touch on the screen and then slide into a control to toggle it. Furthermore, uh, what this allows me to do, if I toggle on a control, tap on the control and then slide off it, it will stay enabled and this allows me to do a second action. Um, in this case, the uh, green is taking precedence over the, the red, so uh, maybe this is a better illustration of it. Um, but what this allows is, in some games, it's very useful to be able to hold down one control, maybe for uh, a fire or something like that, uh, and then just slide onto the second button to, say, jump. Uh, very useful to do, uh, and I've found, seen it in, in several uh, games, and it's, it's quite nice. But if, if this doesn't fit with what you'd like in your control design, you can disable it. So um, let me illustrate here. There's a second option here called uh, uh, Toggle on Leave that you can uh, click. And now if I were to tap down on a, on a control and then slide off it, you'll see it disables itself. So you can do that. Um, you can always disable both if you don't want to have the sliding functionality at all. So you know it won't toggle. It'll only toggle if I tap down on it. Um, so you can, you can customize between these um, toggle boxes to get pretty much whatever behavior uh, you'd prefer. Okay, um, let me just go back to the uh, touch manager component real quick and talk about this uh, show gizmos here. You see it says always. So it's always going to show uh, in the editor. Uh, I can change this and turn it off, say, while the application is playing or maybe only show it uh, for the control that's selected. Um, so you have various options here or maybe never show it. Um, just whatever, whatever suits your uh, debugging style there. Okay. Let's take a look at another control that is provided, um, and that's the uh, virtual stick control. So I'm just going to just uh, use the shortcut button here. Uh, of course, I can do it again through this menu over here and say touch uh, and select stick control. I'll just uh, click the button to make it happen real quick. Okay, uh, this one has quite a few more options um, because I, there are lots of varying opinions on how a stick control should work, so I leave that up to you. Uh, some of it's familiar uh, if you are if you look at the button control, um, and you'll see here again there's an anchor, and uh, this one is by default anchor to the bottom left. Of course, you can switch it. Um, there's the, again the offset unit type. There's uh, offset, um, which again can be in pixels or percent. There's an area here, an active area, and that's this green rectangle. It's maybe a little harder to see here since it goes to the extents. Um, you can see it here in the uh, scene view. And what this is, uh, it, that's where you can tap um, on the screen to activate the control uh, in some circumstances. So we'll, we'll see that with some of the options coming later. Again, you can target either the left stick or the right stick or both if you prefer. Um, of course, you can have more than one of these stick controls uh, if you like a dual stick type um, input system. Um, there's two dead zone controls, uh, sliders here, um, just uh, to provide a little bit of uh, fine tuning there and even more fine tuning you can use this input curve uh, and it's linear by default but if you'd like um, to tweak it very specifically for your game uh, you're welcome to do that of course. <clears throat> now there's a bunch of options here which we'll get to again once I run it it'll make more sense. Okay, let's set up the sprites. Now there's two sprites. There's uh, the inner or the outer ring, uh, which is signified by the outer yellow circle here. There's um, the knob, which is the inner one. And then there's also the knob range down here, which is the uh, red circle. And that just uh, indicates how far the knob can move. So let's set up our sprites and then we'll see what this looks like. Okay, so let's uh, set up the knob here. Um, and set up the ring. Okay, um, and again, there's the busy color and there's the shape and the, um, the sizing can be in percent or pixels. So again, you have that flexibility uh, should you need it. Okay, let's run this and uh, see what we get. And here we go. We see the uh, the control here. I'm just going to click and drag around on it, and you'll see the cube rotates. So again, it feeds straight into in control like a virtual device. Uh, and behaves as far as in control is concerned just like any other controller. Okay, let's look at a few of these little options here. You'll notice that by default snap to initial touch is enabled and also reset when done. Uh, what that is, is if I were to tap anywhere in this active area, you'll see the control jumps. Um, and this is often very useful 
control the user doesn't always um, tap on the control very accurately and so it's nice to be able to just put your thumb down and then drag and they get uh, what they need and you'll notice then it also jumps straight back to where it uh, was placed originally uh, and that's the reset when done and if you want to change the speed at which it moves back you can change this reset duration okay uh, there's one more option in here um, allow dragging and this could be quite useful if I were to take this. What this allows is now when I pull past the extent here, past the knob range, you notice that the control slides with me. And this is useful sometimes in very frenetic games. Um, the user swipes his finger very quickly and uh, then it can be really frustrating to have to uh, swipe very far back just to change direction. So this allows um, the control to just follow the thumb and, and may feel more natural. But again, it's up to you to enable this uh, if you prefer. Okay, there's a couple more controls I can show you, um, and uh, we'll just look at them really briefly. Um, I'm just going to remove uh, the stick control since it'll get uh, in the way. Um, actually, I'll show you something else. Um, in a previous version of the touch controls, uh, it was very hard to disable these touch controls, uh, and, and this has actually been vastly improved in the latest version. Uh, you can just simply disable it here um, in the standard way and everything will disable uh, properly. Um, and this was actually harder than it seems. Uh, but it also, the, the, the entire component can be uh, controlled programmatically also, which I can demonstrate uh, here in a little bit. But that's a little bit more of an advanced topic. Okay, so I'm just going to disable it for now, just so it doesn't get in the way. Uh, and uh, you'll notice there's two more controls. There's a swipe control and a track control. Um, let's take a look at the swipe control. I'm going to add one to the scene. You'll notice that it just uh, puts a rectangle on the screen. There's actually no sprites involved. Uh, what this is, is you know some games have uh, the ability for you to just swipe one direction or another and, uh, and um, maybe the character moves in that direction. So uh, here is a very similar control. Um, it just has an active area, similar to the uh, virtual stick. Um, there's a sensitivity, which is really just how far you need to swipe to activate it. Um, you'll see here there's analog targets and button targets, so this can be uh, quite useful. Uh, let's just set the target to uh, left stick for the moment, and uh, we'll run this and see what we get. Okay, notice now that if I swipe, in some direction, the cube starts moving in that direction. So uh, the analog target just f continues to feed it, um, and when I let go, it stops uh, rotating. So uh, very simple, really, uh, this control. Uh, this is not like a virtual stick, despite maybe what it looks like. Um, it's, it's specifically swipe. It's whatever direction I swiped in, that's, uh, that's what the input I get. Um, okay, snap angles, if you'd like some sort of granularity to it, maybe I can set it to four angles, that's just up, down, left, right. And now you can't get any in-between angles, it'll always be up, down, left, or right. Uh, even if I go diagonal, it's it's going to be one or the other, and uh, you can set it to eight or 16. That may be useful to you, maybe not. Okay, let's look at the uh, button targets. And this one is perhaps a little more interesting. Um, if we just set this to the D-pad, left and right, and uh, now when I swipe, I'm just going to get a single frame of input. And that's as if the button was just pressed for a single frame. And this may be useful in some cases more than the analog control, uh, when you just want to change the direction of the, uh, the player's movement or something like that. And uh, also, uh, if you wanted to, you can toggle the one swipe per touch, in which case you'll get the uh, movement, but you can't swipe anymore. You have to let go before you can swipe again. Again, that may be a specific behavior that you, you need for your game, and that, that will provide it for you. So this is a fairly simple control, but it may be useful in some circumstances. It certainly, I've seen uh, this type of control in a few games before. Okay, I'm just going to delete this component. And now let's add a track control. And perhaps what this uh, sounds like, it's, it's even a simpler control, it's perhaps the simplest control. It has, again, no sprites, just an active area, uh, a target, and a scale. And all this is 
uh, it basically behaves like a mouse trackpad. So if I run this, and I now uh, tap down and then pull, drag the mouse, you'll notice it just moves the cube as I'm dragging. And again, this just basically is a uh, like a trackpad.